Back here at uh, Hadoop Summit 2012. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com with my co-host Jeff Kelly, uh, Omar Tremend, Vice President of Solutions at Cloudera. Welcome back to theCUBE. You've been on before. Thank you very much. Uh, for I being think here. you were on the recruiting <laughs> video. We did a lot of videos in the office. Um, it's really exciting. You guys uh, have changed the world. I mean, I talked to, I remember my first uh, interview at your Palo Alto house when you guys just moved there with Amr around um, Hadoop, and he said, quote, I saw the future at <laughs> Yahoo and wanted to change the world and wanted to bring it to the whole world. And, and if you look at how prolific that was at the time, and I remember when Amr was an EIR at, uh, Amr the co-founder of uh, Cloudera, was an EIR at uh, Excel, I was just coming off my last venture, and uh, we were running into each other, and he was kind of giving me a tease, and he was, he's so good, <laughs> he wouldn't even tell me. I'm like, come on, just get me, tell me what you're working on, I'm working on the same thing. So when he launched, it was like, wow, that's cool, but really, about a year later, it, the world woke up to it when you guys put on Hadoop World yeah. um, in New York City um, in 2010. We had the Cube there, it was our, one of our, our first Hadoop oriented Cube. A lot has changed, so go back and talk about the evolution of Cloudera just from 2009 where it is today. Oh, yeah. Because Hortonworks is shipping their product for the first time right. tomorrow. It's going to be available publicly tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and that's great, they're, they're starting tomorrow. Right. Go back to when you guys were starting. Go back four years, yeah. Um, no, when you it's guys been, shipped your first. It's been quite a when evolution. You shipped we shipped CDH1, um, I believe it was early 2009. This is actually before I joined Cloudera. So I joined um, early 2010, just as we were getting ready to push uh, CDH2 out the door and start our, thank you, our CDH3 process. Um, 18 months ago, we shipped CDH3, and that was uh, a huge breakthrough, especially from an enterprise adoption perspective. It was the first time you had Hadoop security. It was the first time you had really a complete stack that you could drop in in terms of an enterprise IT environment, and things would actually work. Right? What we noticed, and you saw this around Hadoop World, is that when you kind of move out of the web space where people are fine adopting new open source technology and kind of integrating it, um, out kind of in the rest of the world, they need things that work with the rest of their data management infrastructure. Um, and so that, that was a, a tremendous success. And then just a few weeks ago, we actually upped the ante and shipped CDH4, right? And this is now the first time that you have high availability, you have federation in the system, you have coprocessors in HBase, um, and then we shipped both uh, the stable, reliable MR1, and we also shipped MR2. So our customers are actually now rolling out in production on CDH4, and they get the benefit of experimenting with the next step forward and trying to figure out how to move different kinds of frameworks in and solve different kinds of problems Before on the Before we stack. get into the whole uh, CDH4 conversation, um, Jeffrey Moore was on stage, wrote Crossing the Chasm, and it's funny, he's talking to the industry now, because it's <laughs> you guys helped create, or created the industry, a whole new industry, not just the computer industry, uh, the data industry. Um, but he's being kind of generic. He said it's an early market. And the things he talked about, domain expertise, use cases, um, you guys had that two years ago. So what I'd like you to do is talk about, um, um, and now you guys are being humble on your website. Jeff just did a, 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 a post about the big data landscape and you know, your reference customers are Groupon and I think a couple other um, ones on there. But I know, a a I know for a, a fact, few, a few clutter, yeah. <laughs> I know for a fact, just <laughs> being in your office, that you got some other huge customers like right. four letter, three letter uh, agencies and uh, others. So, you know, obviously the federal, financial, and big markets and, and hyperscale. Um, the theme here is enterprise ready. And right. you're out, you're out pounding the pavement. Um, you guys have seen those use cases. So talk about the, the enterprise ready experience that you guys have had. Yeah. Um, I mean, over the past uh, 24 months. Yeah, our, uh, uh, Mike Olson, our CEO, uh, has a famous quip he's had since, since day one, since I joined Cloudera, certainly, which is the way you ship reliable enterprise software is you ship unreliable enterprise software and then you fix it. Right? And we've kind of had four years of experience doing that. Um, so, you know, going back to when we actually uh, released CDH3, when enterprise really started adopting this en masse, I mean, we were seeing, as you pointed out, financial services, uh, extensive use within uh, the government, uh, uh, both here and, and elsewhere. Uh, extensive use across the telco industry, and I think 
Uh, fascinatingly, in telco, traditionally you think of big data as kind of on the back end, trying to figure out and optimize the networks. But telcos today also have uh, extensive service layer infrastructure. Right? You go and you, you know, flip through your cable box at home, they're not just delivering bits over the wire, they're delivering higher value content. And all of that needs to be optimized, needs to be delivered uh, in terms of recommendations and predictive analytics on how people are going to interact with those services. That uh, use of Hadoop extends throughout uh, the telecommunications industry there. Um, and the more interesting things that we're seeing now is breaking out of the traditional uh, kind of tech leading uh, data centric uh, applications into companies like uh, Explorus, which is trying to improve uh, healthcare, health quality, and reduce costs. You know, they're looking at, uh, or they use HBase and they're looking at data that's across uh, clinical care as well as bid billing data, electronic medical records, and pulling that together to help figure out that if you're in an emergency room and if you have uh, a certain rate of follow-up care, that's going to improve your overall recovery time and reduce overall costs. So they plumb that back into the system. And that's just fascinating uses of really how to impact the world at large outside of the early adopters. Talk about the dynamics. Of, I mean, there's a lot of insiders that are watching, as well as a lot of people who are new to the whole, well, not new to open source, but new to the whole Cloudera, Hortonworks dynamic. Because Hortonworks is, we're 100% open source, mm -hmm. and we'll make money on service support and training, right. and we'll do some biz dev deals. Well, that's what you guys do too, right? So you guys do 100, you're 100% open source, but you also have CD8. So right. Mike Olson's been on theCUBE, so is Amr. <laughs> and every time they bang their fist and say, we are 100% open source. And oh, by the way, we have CDH. Yeah. So explain the dynamic and how that's used, because sure. you guys are very committed to the community. It's pretty obvious. Well, you so. Don't, you, you, you commit to, to Apache. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, straight up, so our platform team who builds Apache Hadoop, um, they build on Apache Hadoop, right? When they do a check-in, they check in to Apache Hadoop. We don't have a separate repository, right? We build Hadoop. Now what we package and distribute is pulling everything from uh, Apache, testing it so that it works, making sure it's integrated. So when you digest information via Flume and then you put it into HBase, you run some processing in Pig, you publish it out via Hive, you scoop it via high-performance connectors to Teradata or Netiza, that everything works end to end, right? It uses the same file types, it uses the same the compression codex, all the schemas translate and work. That's what it means to package and ship a full distribution. And we do that using entirely open source software. That's CDH. That is CDH. So what mm -hmm. you're saying, just so I can get, I want to get this kind of packaged up into a nice little box. <laughs> CDH is all open source stuff that you guys pulled. Exactly. Not proprietary code. CDH is Apache Hadoop. That you guys just test. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And right. how's and, that and different from what Hortonworks is doing? Uh, I think we've had four years of experience testing and shipping, uh, and it seems trivial uh, at first blush. I talked to a guy recently who uh, was very interested in getting to the code. So he said, you know what, I'm going to go and uh, just download the tarball and try and build everything. And it took him a week, right? If you want to use CDH, it takes you five minutes. Why? Because we've actually invested all that time over four years building up the infrastructure to make sure that these dozen different components can build and ship and yeah. work well together. Well, I mean, I'll say, I'll say personally, we built an, um, an application that's a Hadoop H-based schema layer, app layer, and UI layer all integrated in. And all without, CDH. Without Cloudera, we would take it six months. So, you know. I just and we out. give it all away for free. Yeah. <laughs> now, what do you charge for then? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Well, I that's important to us. The platform has to be 100% open source. That's a core tenant mm -hmm. in Cloudera. Yeah, that is an absolute statement. You guys are saying, Cloudera is saying 100% Right. Open source. Right. So right. now we move on there to Cloudera Manager. Right. So, so how does that play? So that, so that is we, we are keeping a, that to yourself. We're a business, right? That is true. We like <laughs> to make money. Uh, we need to be able to fund the development. You're not a non-profit? <laughs> we're not, a, non we are not a non-profit. Uh, and so what we heard very early on, uh, before we introduced any additional software, is that um, in terms of management operations, deployment, configuration, monitoring the system, that there were challenges out there. And there are solutions. People do stitch together open source packages in order to accomplish that. But if you're managing a mission critical system, right? so one of our customers, for example, um, uh, what they're actually doing is stitching together satellite imagery in order to provide commercial applications where you can actually tell during the day how crops are performing or how uh, different stores are performing, just kind of counting the, the cars in the parking lot. Oh, wow. um, that kind of application, if their customers are depending on that in order to run their business, then the system is mission critical. Right. It, it actually drives day-to-day -day revenue. 
so in order to do that, you actually need very sophisticated management operations. And we have a lot of experience doing that. We've basically built that Hadoop intelligence into software. Right. So this is, uh, this is experience that, that we've built up uh, over the years in actually running enterprise Hadoop systems. And we ex do that in terms of a, a piece of software called Cloudera Manager. Mm -hmm. We package it with uh, global 24 by seven dedicated production support. So we have engineers, contributors, committers who do nothing but provide uh, customer operations backing to our customers uh, around the globe. And that all gets offered as a subscription. And this is a model that Red Hat pioneered and did very well. So talk about, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about uh, over the last day and a half about integrating Hadoop into your kind of current enterprise environment to kind of leverage existing systems. You've already invested a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about taking that a little bit deeper and talking about integrating Cloud Era Manager and the management and monitoring ca capabilities into your infrastructure yeah. so that, you know, it's not, you know, here we've, we're monitoring our IT infrastructure here and then we've got our Cloud Era Manager over here. How do you, exactly. how do you do that? How do you bring that into the enterprise uh, IT monitoring management uh, paradigm? So one of the things that we did with Cloudera Manager is spend considerable time with our customers' IT departments. Mm -hmm. We said, what kind of tools do you have and how do you need to get access to this data? From a data center operations perspective, how do you manage the high SLAs that you now have on your mission critical Cloudera clusters? And so what we did is built in both uh, API level integration, so you can actually run it completely headless. You get full REST API so that you can control the entire system. You get all of the Hadoop intelligence backing that. Mm -hmm. And you get the unified monitoring and alerting uh, uh, out of that system. And then on top of that, we also built in features like LDAP integration. So if you have already an LDAP server, or an Active Directory server, you have uh, authorized administrators for your system. You point Clutter Manager at that, and they're allowed to now uh, manage your, your Hadoop cluster. You don't have to have you know, management of separate administrators just for your Hadoop cluster. So it's those kinds of very low level, tight integrations that are exactly what our, into the systems are exactly what our customers use, mm -hmm. uh, that we've actually built into Cloudera Manager. So you're charging basically for support on a subscription basis? Uh, so through we, Cloud, um, through right, right. So, so what our goal, or at the end goal, is how do we help our customers profit? How do they benefit? How do their customers benefit? And we look at the platform itself as the foundational capabilities, and what we charge for is how do we actually make them successful? and we make them successful via support, we make them successful via software that we deliver on site. We have a very rich knowledge base that they have access to. We have extensive solution guides that they can actually use to deploy, uh, for example, a run book to onboard a new administrator. And of course, we complement that. Clutter University is where we've taught over 12,000 people. We're teaching about 1,500 people Sarah's a month. Sarah's been doing an amazing job Sarah's been training. doing an incredible job at Clutter University. Um, and then we also enable our partners. We have over, two, over 250 partners who, when we go and walk in and talk to our customers about what they need, we have a partner across the table who we've already worked with and integrated the software so they know it's going to work when they deploy it. Well, you guys clearly are number one. Hortonworks is running as fast as they can to get into number two. Um, we're kind of parsing a little bit, uh, you know, just strategies, but it's ultimately it's the same strategy. I'll get Apache stable. Their version of support and training is just a little bit different. You have training. Right. You've been doing training till the cows come home since Sarah came on board, right? So, mm -hmm. so, uh, but the support model is just a little bit different. Yes. You call it error manager. That's it, right? Yes. And it's a little bit more nuanced. I think. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it's the benefit of experience. Uh, we've been doing this for a bit longer. Uh, today, about half the Fortune 50 are running Cloudera. That uh, teaches you a lot about how to build and ship reliable mission critical software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, as uh, I think I said before, there are not too many version four platforms in this big data landscape. I believe right there now. is one. Yeah, right so. now. And if I heard from you correctly, it's it's just a lock on number one today, and everyone's competing for number two. Not yeah. taking words out of your mouth. <laughs> But it's still well, a very competitive I mean, but you know, they could, I mean, you don't know how the market could spin. The market's we growing. We absolutely We've have to focus on where our customers are investing. Yeah. And we need to make sure that we're meeting what they need. And I'd say keep an eye out for CDH5. You know, I'm impressed with Hortonworks <laughs> uh, movements. They really, you know, they dialed down the rhetoric, anti-Cloudera rhetoric from a year ago. Um, they got they got their house in order. They have some good people over there. They're doing some good work, and so I mean, it's that's clearly always been my view on their strategy. They got to get to a, a close number two because the valuations just you guys your valuations very high right now, and uh, you guys are doing extremely well. Um, so congratulations. Uh, my you. question, Omar, is a little bit more now to the use cases. So you guys got a lot under your belt. I know, and and being staying close to your career, you're out on the road a lot, talking to customers. You know a lot about the marketplace from we've talked about uh, you know some of the things HP's done with acquisitions and, and big data. Yeah. 
the world on the uh, outside of the Hadoop ecosystem is complex. So there's the unstructured, structured environment. When you go out to your customer base, uh, what are the kinds of deployments you guys are now working on? I mean, yeah, proof of concepts, we're moving, you guys are moved out of that phase. There's more production. We heard from uh, Hortonworks that Yahoo's doing some age-based stuff in the milliseconds with Messenger. That's a, a precursor to what we think others will do. What, is your, what are you seeing out there as in terms of meaty deployments, meaty solutions? Uh, I mean, we're seeing fascinating stuff uh, across the board. Um, I'll touch actually a little bit more in terms of the telco services. Um, so Navtech, a group within uh, Nokia, provides a very rich map data and point POI data. Um, they've actually been running that on HBase on, on Cloud Earth for a few years now. Um, so that's a production application that touches all of us day to day. Um, if you look at Mozilla using a Firefox browser, and occasionally it crashes, different plugins, different complexities, and they want to keep the bar up in terms of quality. Every time it crashes, that goes into a Cloudera system so that they can analyze it and improve the product. Uh, we actually had uh, at our launch uh, one of our great customers, a company called Opower. And what they're actually focused on is trying to gather all the smart meter data in real time, pull all that data in, uh, load it up into Hadoop, load it up into HBase, and then be able to inform both the utilities in terms of how they respond to different dynamics and demand, as well as inform the consumer so that they can get smarter about their energy usage. What's, so the, coolest thing you've, what's the coolest thing you've seen over the past 12 months? I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I can't tell you that in very many ways. <laughs> okay, so it's government related, so we know that. Um, Omar, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate your commentary. Just one final sound bite for the folks out there who want to know about what's going on at Cloudera yeah. um, and some of the successes you had. You want to just open mic directly to the audience, tell them kind of what's going on at Cloudera and Oh, absolutely, I mean, we're thrilled about the, the recent release about CDH4, Cloudera Manager 4, uh, Cloudera Enterprise's new version. Uh, I think it's something you should all take a look at and try, it's got some amazing new features in it. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest from Cloudera, Eli, who, uh, Eli Collins, he runs the releases over there. We're going to find out uh, how much, how much, uh, how long it's going to be until CDH5, which uh, <laughs> I hear he's working on, found that out last night, so we'll be right back with Eli right after this short break. <laughs>